Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be doing a Dinky 38C Lagonda. This is a uh, a model that's been mailed to me by one of my one of my subscribers. And there's a opening. It's been well packaged. And there she is. Let's put her on the turntable. And you can see that it's in it's in a reasonably good condition. It's been treated very well. It's been repainted. The also the wheels have been repainted, and I believe the seats have been repainted. But all overall, it looks like it's been very well cared for. Uh, the windshield is broken off. You can see just the top of it, and you can see the bottom poking through the little slot. So first thing is to drill out the rivets. And I'm using my special split point uh, cobalt drill because that tends to self center. I just tighten her in the chuck and line it with the with the rivet and drill out the portion until until it's gone and there's just the edge of the sheet metal. There it easily pops off. You can see the base is pretty much damaged and it's very rusty. Again I go in until all the rivet is gone and this one just pops right off. You can see it's very very rusty and it's been dented. The base has been dented quite a bit. And I will then take my special drill and I keep it with my other milling cutters. So I'm going to have to straighten out this base and take the rust off of it. The wheels and axles uh, come off. They're held in by the base. And here's what's left of the windshield. So it's very interesting and it's very good that it's there because I can copy this internal shape which I would have otherwise no idea what it would look like. And the steering wheel is held in with a, with a little nail with a head on one end and the other end is just bent. So now I gotta finagle it out of there. It doesn't want to come. So I'll push it from the other end and now we got it. It's quite rusty so that'll have to be cleaned of the rust as well. So the wheels, the tires, look to me to be not original. They look in fact like the uh, O-rings that I replace my wheels with. They are in perfect condition. So I'm going to reuse those. And the axles, the one is straight. The front one, where there isn't a dented base. It's straight, so I'm just uh, taking off the mushroom and the other hub is stuck on there anyway. This this axle is bent quite a bit. I'm not going to be able to save that, so I just cut it in half and I'll have to replace it with a, with a new axle. So this one doesn't want to come out, so take it out with a hammer. Still doesn't want to come out. So I better get a punch and tap it through. I didn't tap it all the way through. I don't want to lose the axle. So there it is. So there's all my parts. The rusty parts go into the Vaporust uh, rust remover and the painted parts go outside. Get a little bit of boiling hot water and some caustic soda. I don't have in Canada any good paint removers so most of the time I'm going to keep using caustic soda. And there's the base with the rust removed and that little nail that holds the steering wheel in. First step is I go and I'll uh, smooth out the finish with the wire wheel. There's too many details in this one that the big wheel won't get everything. So I'm going to have to go to extremes in my case which is to use the Dremel tool. Even that doesn't really get into all of the corners but does a pretty good job. 
I go through and I clean up what's left with a pointy swab. Now the rear fenders are a little bit damaged. This one's damaged a little bit more. And hammering it out is the best way to fix it. Then I file it up and sand it up and fix those. So the sheet metal, that's going to need to be straightened and the best way I find is to hammer it against an anvil. In this case it's just a piece of ground steel that I have for all purposes. Then I use my parallel pliers. And I do a lot more than what I show here. It takes a lot of hammering and a lot of work to get this thing to be straight. On the, on the inside there's a bit of paint that's gone through. I put some ordinary paint remover and take that out of there. So there it's ready for printing with the magnet and the body is just clamped in place. So this is a self etching primer. It's also green so when I do a green car this is my best bet to use. The base gets uh, just this spray bomb, satin uh, black paint, and of course I forgot to uh, drill out these posts for screws. So it has to go back into the vise even though it's already been painted. And I'm using this special tapping attachment that has a, it's a spring loaded pin so it's all aligned. It makes it very easy to tap a very straight hole. The tap is, is a spiral flute tap so that, so that the chips actually are pulled out as it goes in. So I go in and I do the back. Obviously this is speeded up a lot just to give you an idea of the steps that are involved. Tap drill. You can see there's a bit of oil there. I always use uh, tapping fluid on these models. They're, the metal is very chewy and that prevents this tap from sticking and breaking inside. Then I've got my little, these are, these are 440 Imperial screws. All my tooling is Imperial, so it's hard for me to start using metric now. So I'm happy with my 440 screws, although they're a little bit harder to get now. So I'm using the uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous Green Paint. This is a very close match to the original paint, and so I'm not going to mix it with anything. And I'm mixing in with it the uh, the leveling thinner, which uh, keeps it moist or keeps it dry, uh, wet longer, so that it has a chance to smooth out and it comes with a shinier finish. It doesn't really matter that much because I always put lacquer over top of the finish when I when I do these models. So I'm in the spray booth, and I also do the hubs, and I've got this rotating platform. And now that it's done, what I always do is I go in with the fine sandpaper. This is uh, micro mesh, very high quality sandpaper. Now the interior is going to be a darker version of green, so I'm going in with, uh, with more green paint and I'm mixing black with it to give it a dark green color and that looks like it's going to match well with this model. And again, leveling thinner. The seats don't actually need the leveling thinner. I probably could have got away with using the ordinary thinner because the seats are kind of rough in the casting themselves because it's, it's supposed to be leather or something, so it's going to be a softer material. So in the meantime, I'm going to do the windshield. So I didn't buy a windshield. I've got the the sample part and I have bits of plastic from packaging so I'm just drawing an outline on this thing and then I'm going to cut it out. I'm putting an extra long length there because I don't know how you're going to get this thing through that slot on the bottom of the of the uh, on the base so I put this long thing to make it easy for me to get it on and I can cut it off when it's done. I'm not sure if that's how Dinky did it, but we're going to find out when I go to put this thing back together again. 
So there I cut out all those little cuts and let's test fit it. There it goes through the slot and here's the body and the windshield slot and it fits in there nicely and let's see there I can put the base on and it's obviously too tall so that looks about right and then I curve the edges of the top of the window so that it looks like uh, it looks like a finished window so there we go window is ready now I'm paint getting taping it up for painting the interior I like to show this part of it. It's very, to me, it's very interesting to watch the taping process and the painting and then the untaping process. And it's fun for editing too. So I go in, I, I go in with very light setting and I'm going into all those little corners without making the paint run. It's, it's a bit of a trick to do that. And this is the, this is the test of how good my taping is, how those edges turn out and if anything bled underneath and nothing did. It was a perfect taping job and a complete success. So there it is. So back to the tape right away because the front grille and the headlights were originally painted way Dinky did it was they had some kind of a mask uh, that they would put and I, I'm, I'm not sure of the details but I read about it and they would create these masks and they would paint a couple of models and then throw they were made of cardboard and then they would throw the mask out so there was there was other equipment involved in preparing these things but I don't have the capability of making that fancy mask but I do have tape and here goes my rust-oleum metallic silver paint and the whole body has been covered with paper towel and tape and all that stuff has to come back off again so this model had a lot of taping and untaping and it's so finicky in the front I had to get all these little folded pieces of tape so nothing would get through which worked out really well because nothing got through and onto the bodywork so I didn't have to clean it up afterwards So then the last step is to put a lacquer coating. The paint had been sanded and the lacquer makes it shiny again. And I'm using Mr. Hobby lacquer for that. So now my axles, one of them is broken so I'm going to get a pop rivet and I, here's how you prepare your axle as you take off the aluminum portion. Actually this is an aluminum shaft rivet as well. I like to work with the aluminum. Uh, it's a lot easier to deal with than the steel rivets. But then again I'm using the, the steel original axle, the other one. And it's not that much of a difference in filing and sanding because it's such a small part. But I still, I still did this with the aluminum. So I put a flat end on it. The mushroom on these things is a little bit too big so it goes into my lathe where I've attached this uh, drill chuck for doing very very small parts. So I spin that and then I take my fine file and I shape it more like a dinky mushroom. I want it to look indistinguishable from a, from a dinky axle and nobody's ever going to notice. So for the next stage, I've got to take out this uh, drill chuck and put in a different collet. And this one I'm putting in a stop in the back because when the axle goes in, I can't have it pushed back. So it comes up against the stop and I keep machining instead of having the axle push into the collet. And I've made this little brass collet because there's a head on the end and so the head won't fit into the collet. So the little brass thing uh, gives me a layer in between. So it's a smaller diameter but the head fits into the collet itself. So I center drill and then I drill a ho clearance hole inside. You can see it came out nicely. And here I'm going to polish the 
head of a nail. Tiny little wire nails. And that's what I'm going to be using as the mushroom. And here's the axle while I'm at the grinder with the buffing wheel. I do the other axle as well, make it shiny. So here's the nail with the newly made button. And I cut it shorter so that it fits into the hole, which is kind of shallow in these things. And there it goes. So all the parts are ready. Oh, in, in between, I did paint that steering wheel. I didn't show painting it, but it is painted. And I'm going to put the I'm going to put these tires back on. And I put it on the axle because it makes it easier to handle the whole thing. It's two, three, and four. So those are all ready to go. All the parts are ready. So first step, I'm going to put the steering wheel back on. That's painted with the uh, satin finish, black spray bomb. I polished that little pin as well. And there it goes in. And inside, I take my prong-nosed liars and bend the thing back again a little bit. And thankfully, it didn't fatigue and break off. And it looks perfect. So the axles can now be made up. So I choose the best end of each uh, of each wheel, so that the best end is is outward, the one that you're going to see. And there's my setups, and I've got my two pins. And I take a piece of note paper as my backing, and this is my five-minute epoxy from the dollar store, which is the best one. I'm, I'm going to do a video about these epoxies and show what the professional epoxies work compared with with this stuff from the from the dollar store so that's a little bit of uh, epoxy on each one of those and then push these in and there we go five minutes I've got perfect axles So time to reassemble this model. I take out the screws in the bottom. And you notice that the bottom is black. I actually ran out of green paint, so I made the I made the bottom side black. It's not visible except in the wheel wells, so the black actually works pretty good. Now the rear wheels on this one are very they they, they it makes the car ride very low. So I want to raise the axle a bit. So I've taken a toothpick and cut it to length and then carefully split it in half. And I can put that half into the casting and then put my axle on top of it. It looks wrong when it doesn't have that spacer because it looks like the, the toy is already damaged. So I've improved. Uh, Dinky, I guess, made a bit of a, mis a miscalculation on that rear axle. Unless this car was deliberately had very low rear wheels, but I don't think it did. This levels it out nicely. So there it is. This is what we started with. Let's see what it looks like now. There it is. Beautiful model. Looks just like it did when it came out of the box wrapped in purple tissue paper. So this is going to be winging its way back home to its owner and I hope he's going to enjoy uh, this model being restored. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. Until next time, be seeing you!